Hold on. No, it's too late. Hold the motherfucking phone. Oh shit, we're live. Uh, yeah. No, bomb. no, no, you don't. You're not listening to me. It's too late. But Chris, I'm about to fight a divine beast. I don't care. But Chris, <laughs> I <laughs> super don't care. The Legend of Zelda, bruh. Yeah, I don't. I really don't care. How do you not care? I mean, I do care. I'm, I'm jealous because I, I do want to play it. Okay, but uh, don't be a butt. I've got to finish one game this year. And what game will that be? I don't know. I'm working on um. You know, you could need Horizon it? like an adult. I'm working on Mass Effect, so. So you'll never beat anything. Shut up. The only, thing, the only thing he'll ever beat is his meat. <laughs> it's funny because I'm making fun of your propensity for masturbation. It's not a propensity. Chris, you literally that's all you do in your life. It's, it's literally not. It is. I have a life. Yeah, it's called masturbation. Shut up. How are you Just doing, Doug? I'm all right. Is Josh there? there? Josh is not there. No, he had dinner with his parents or something. So he was going to let Josh me know when he was out of that. I don't know. Well, I think we all know, but <laughs> I don't know we what's know, going on. We right don't know. So yeah. my phone is dead, and I can no longer message or get texts or emails or anything from people. So since Josh refuses to have Facebook and I can't access Twitter anymore, uh, you need to tell. Josh to like message me or something on the Facebook. Yeah, I'll message his number or something. I'll get it, get whatever from him. Information. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Because I still have Facebook Messenger. I just don't have the Facebook. Hey, Chris. Right now. You want to yeah. tell Doug my awesome joke I said yet today? If you must. You should tell him. No. Hey, Doug. Justice. Doug. Yeah. Why do the guards protecting Big Ben always look so tired? Why does what look so tired? Why Sorry. do the royal guards protecting Big Ben always look so tired? Uh, because they're working around um, the clock. Ah, uh, I'm that just get out. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, I wish I could uninvite you. You can't. <laughs> here. Perkins showed up just in time to hear the joke. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Matt, did you see what the episode was entitled? He said LMAO. Yeah. Did you Tom see what and Jerry episode? meet a Serbian film? Yes. I don't get it. Well, earlier today, I was informed of the monstrosity that is affecting our, the blight upon our world. Tom and Jerry are going to meet Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory in a movie. And from what I can tell, they've taken the songs and like animated over them and maybe some of the dialogue. And it looks Why? like trash. Why? Because, I don't know. Tom and Jerry makes money. Huh? Why do you let things like that happen to us? <laughs> Why is that happening? Kids look. Kids, I don't understand. Well, kids love Tom and Jerry, but apparently in this new film, Tom and Jerry are, are Charlie Bucket's pets. Huh? Oh. By proxy, they get to go to the chocolate factory. Oh God. Well, what? as topical as and and just well with the modern era as this uh, this combo idea is. It's it the animation is so terrible that when I showed it to Callie, she said, Is this a is this a joke? <laughs> it looks like it's it could be done by anyone on YouTube for a nickel. Well, they probably spent a similar amount of money. I mean, we say like kids love Tom and Jerry, but do kids love Tom and Jerry right now? Do the, I don't think anyone remembers Tom and Jerry. That's what I'm saying. Like we had cartoons from the forties and fifties when we were growing up, but, like, do the modern kids do that, or are they too busy watching, like, 
I don't know, stealing Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're too busy well, but, doing that, or or they're watching videos of toys getting unboxed. Yeah, so, yeah, YouTube. All, no, all Chris, way, you've right? made unboxing videos. I've done. I've never watched an unboxing video. No, you've made them. I I made one. Yeah, and it was part of the problem. Hey, Matt, I put the uh, I put the trailer in the in the in the chat. Just to give that a gander with the sound off. Okay. Clicking it. Sound off. Tom and Jerry, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory 20. Oh, my God. Chris, you know what this looks like? Okay. Real talk. There is There was a brand new Frosty the Snowman movie on Netflix. It's like Frosty the Snowman 3 or something. Yeah. Legit, I believe this is the same animation studio. What an amazing event. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. Chris, we yeah. need to watch this. So bad. No, no, no. This is great. No, I'm not yes. watching it. Yes, we are. No, I'm not. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. But it has the music from the original movie in it, so it's kind of weird. Oh, this is good. Somebody just had some old rights laying around, and they don't know what to do with them. I this guess. I mean, I, I guess they were just sitting there like, just remake Willy Wonka with animation. Yeah, it looks uh, like a joke. Like when somebody, like, like you know, when Family Guy tries to mimic the old style right? or something. Like, just, yes, that's exactly that's what it looks like. And it's just there to make a horrible joke. Like, this kind of is, I mean, really. It's it's a cruel joke on our society. Yeah, but like, I would literally just put Tom and Jerry into the original movie and re-release it. Like just animated, <laughs> shove them that in there. Uh, like, so, uh, Chris, why do you let like this happen? I just this looks just ridiculously awful. So, so the reason why I put a Serbian film is because everyone's like, well, yeah, let's just put Tom and Jerry in every movie. <laughs> what does that have to do with Serbia? Are you racist, Chris? No, because I picked the most disturbing film I could think of offhand. You're the worst, buddy. Yeah. So what do you want to start with, Matt? Well, I I'm going to be honest with you. I don't actually know if there's very much video game news, so why don't we start with you? Sure, I can do that. Oh, excuse me for one second. Hmm. All right. So, how about that Cloak and Dagger trailer? Yo. Okay, real talk, Chris. I didn't know that happened. Oh, it yeah, came, it out, came today. out today. It needs to be good, and it looks great. That trailer was kind of super awesome. Yeah. But it really does need to be good. I don't think I could handle it being a failure. I mean, I don't have any strong opinion to Cloak and Dagger regardless, so... I know, Chris, because it's kind a of racial thing, and you're just not about it. You want to make America great again. I get it. You make I'll it clear it. every week. You know, but I'm still... If this looks good, I'll watch it. I don't care. It does look good. Yeah, I don't have any audio. Looks good. No, it does look good. I think... It, uh, I, and at the end, when they start showing the powers... It's gonna be good times. Yeah. It's, it's worth. I think it's hilarious that we, this thing's been in the in the t in the tanks since like 2011. I think that was when they first just announced that they wanted to do something. Yeah, you remember that Comic Con though? Everyone was like, "Oh, yo, cloak and dagger." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like five years ago or something, I remember them talking about possible TV properties, and they mentioned Squirrel Girl and Runaways and this and something else, and they're just now getting around doing any of them which is weird considering it's the biggest media company on the planet you think they could yeah. move things forward mm. speaking of trailers we into it. did anyone else see the krypton trailer uh no no i did it's it's okay okay someone, <laughs> someone described it as like space game of thrones Eh, we'll see. I'm look. 
I want Cloak and Dagger to be great, and I'm more. I, I really want Runaways to be good. I don't think my poor soul could handle Runaways being a failure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of trailers, how about that last Jedi trailer? What's that? Yeah, I, I watched that eight times in a row. Yep. I'm very What's excited that? about that one. What's the last Jedi trailer? Hey, it, you know what? The Jedi have to end. I don't get yeah. it. Well, you wouldn't. You know what else has to end? Star Wars. Good luck with that. We need to make room for more quality programming. Like? I don't know. Anything? You know, like Green Lantern and the Ninja Turtles. Yes. And Avatar. Avatar, Chris. I'm sorry, Avatar. Avatar yeah. on. Yeah. Good week for trailers. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what R- random uh random thing for you uh a little th- there's a new cracked after hours i saw it oh you already watched it of course you're the worst why why don't you watch things with me you live in another state i don't think that has anything to do with anything Ooh. So- <laughs> doug doug Doug? What? There you go. I have a question for you. Yeah. What is the best spinoff show you've ever watched? Spinoff show? Um, I actually was just contemplating this because I was watching something really good that was a really good spinoff. I can't remember what it was anymore. I mean, technically, is Legion like a spinoff? You know, like, that's a really good show. That's kind of franchise. That might not count. I don't count um, as a spinoff. Yeah. I mean, the only one that's popping in my head, the only spinoff that's even popping in my head is Angel, so that might be might have to be my answer. But um, What about Frasier? Oh, yeah, Frasier is very good. But, like, I don't know. I didn't get as much enjoyment out of it. As it well, what, I guess you could also count sequels. Oh, and you know it's Joey. Like, like Legend of Korra isn't quite a spinoff of Airbender. It's more of a direct sequel. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll count those as well. Yeah, but it's it's basically a spinoff. I mean, well, basically, this whole question is leading up to the correct answer, which I can't wait for Chris to corroborate. It's actually the follow-up to Naruto, called Boruto, Naruto Next Generations. We and, did watch the first uh, episode of Boruto while you were in town. Yep. And sees episode three just aired. And let me tell you, Doug, it's a uh, it's good time, bro. Ooh, Jake yeah. in the uh, in the chat said Agent Carter. That's a good one. Oh yeah. Okay, Agent Carter will go over over Angel for me. Agent Carter was much better oh, than Agents of Shield, at least for the first three seasons. Agents of Shield was good. Ever since they started the uh, the AI thing. Oh shit! Yeah, it's been so good. I just watched the last one before. I was going to say, how great is this alternate reality? This is the best storyline I think they've ever done, and oh, um, like, has everybody seen it? No, too little, too late. <laughs> Like, I was so happy to see the returning character. Yes. That just, like, it was, like, a character that I didn't, I thought, like, the actor was, like, weak, but was probably a decent person or whatever. But I was still happy to see him back. It's, like, a character I miss, even though I don't feel it's being performed properly. <laughs> it's just a weird, like, I want uh, Tommy back, too. What When is fucking Arrow going to bring Tommy back? Look, we got Trip. Yeah. I'm we got all about Trip back, back, Chris. Huh? Yeah. Chris doesn't even know. I don't. He's Nor does he care. He, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is too little too late. But it wasn't. It's been steadily got better, like, until... Chris, last... Chris can't even be bothered to watch the Netflix shows. He's not going to bother with a show that's just okay. <laughs> I think it was just okay, like, up until, like, Winter Soldier. And then it was good... And then it was great. And it was great for a while, and it kept getting better. They kept fixing all the problems, 
that I had with the show one at a time. Yeah. In and very- now, it's, now it's actually a solid ass show. I did. I never yeah. thought I'd see the day when I was looking forward for Agents of Shield to come back on. Yeah. I'm more excited yeah, about it than most of the other shows. Same with like though the Arrow's return to form has made me excited about that show again. Yeah, so basically this year has just been really good for shows being useful again. Yeah, I like it. Uh, but yeah, back to Star Wars because I was shit posting it real quick just to mess out, mess around with it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for a teaser trailer, it was super solid. Yeah, and I, I'm just to be honest with you, I'm a fan of Ryan Johnson. Like, Brick's one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I love Brothers Bloom. And I love Looper. And he's like one of these directors that does a different thing every time. Oh, Looper was like, good. Yeah. And so, and he wrote the this one and then the third one. Uh, and is directing this one. And so I just am excited to see what he does with it. And it was his pitch, this whole like kind of story they're going with. So I, I sometimes I feel like the first movie is all of George's pitch of what he wanted to happen in the last three just sort of smashed together in the first movie and now this is ryan johnson taking it taking the ball and running with it um and i just believe in him as a filmmaker you know i feel like this is going to be the empire of this series uh where it's the best made um you know cinematography wise it already looked like the shot choice and everything in the little bit we got and then the idea of balance i've i'm super stoked about it because I've always wanted that. Like I've been like really like really like I can't get into the EU stuff. I never could because they they were always still going with this light, dark, really simplistic evil. And I really always wanted like a balanced thing, a true neutral or something, you know? Uh, and so that's what it looks like they're about to introduce the idea of. Heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm excited about the story more than I am. Like, the little glimpses, I mean, we've, we've already seen what this Star Wars looks like. I'm just excited that everybody's back, you know. Cool. Including Carrie, which yes. ought to be interesting. And that video they had of her at Celebration made me very sad. Yeah. Yeah. It was a tear jerker. It turns out she's not going to be in the third one, like we thought, or like we heard. Uh... That's what Kathleen Kennedy said, anyway, at the at Star Wars Celebration. So that rumor is not true, and she's only in uh, eight, episode eight. Okay. Okay. And then she won't be in. Hey, Matt. What? How many post-credit sequences do you want for Guardians of the Galaxy? I want five, <laughs> Chris. Well, good. You're getting five. <laughs> I want one for no, four no. finger on my hand. Yeah, five post-credit sequences. It's actually going to be five, or if one of them be like a cannonball run, just running while the credits are running. That's just <laughs> stupid. Chris, since James Gunn likes to put the credits in the beginning of his movie, the entire movie counts as a post-credit scene. Yeah. yeah. Here's just my question. I just don't get, like, if there's all these scenes, why not put them in the movie? Because, Chris... We heard you like end credit scenes, so we put end credits in your end credits, and it's like an exhibit. I think this is James Gunn. I think there will be the two real ones or whatever, and then the rest of them are making fun of how many end credit sequences we're doing now. I get behind like, that. I think oh, it's going to be an end credit sequence joke, you know? Like I really, I really want Deadpool two to have to have like seventeen in credit sequences, each one yeah. lasting like ten seconds until it just keeps yeah like you just you just keep interrupting you have a have a mid post credit sequence sequence <laughs> that would be a lot of fun to be great yeah. surprised they didn't do that in the first one yeah I know. Well, they, that's because they were, they did the phenomenal Ferris Bueller's Day Off parody. Yeah, I mean that was I've always wanted. I've wondered why no one was doing that gag, and I guess Deadpool is the only person that can. So, uh, so Jacob and Chad brought up a good point. What do you think is uh? Do you think Guardians is relying too heavily on the novelty of Baby Groot? 
I've seen this brought up online, and I, I think it'll all go away when you watch it. I don't think James Gunn is going to, like, overly push that character. Just like No, I agree. I, I, if anything, it smacks of a... Uh, it's a marketing decision, I think. Yeah, it smacks of a marketing department going, oh, people loved Baby Groot. We're going to make that the focus of all They're of our trailers. I don't think it's going to be in the movie that way. I think he's going to be... It's just like... There's a raccoon already and a, and a tree in the last one, right? It, this is just going to freshen up the character dynamic because instead of Groot being the old one, you know, he's going to be the baby. Right. He's fucking up. And raccoon's going to, ha- like, Rocket's going to have to watch out for him instead of the other way around. I think it's going to be kind of cool, you know, to see that that way. Gotcha. So, yeah, I think it's that they're going to put him on bags of Doritos, yeah. But like that's your your people confuse the marketing with these superhero movies with the actual content because there's no content yet. You haven't seen the fucking movie, you know. Um, and I do think Disney oversaturates the market and they have a tendency of wearing people out. I feel like that's what happened with Age of Ultron. Is it wasn't as bad as people thought it was right off the bat. It's not as good as Avengers, but it's like, you know, it just kind of they over like it was everywhere. For months and months. Like, I'm actually kind of worried. I just looked up when Ragnarok was coming out, and it's in November. And I'm like, oh, we just started the trailers already? <laughs> Jesus. I don't want to see any more of that movie before November now. Because, like, I already am sold. I'm sold. Just leave me alone now. But yeah, I know he's going to be it's, In my head, I always go, you know what? I'm not going to watch. I'm going to go to media blackout. And then a new trailer comes out, and everyone on social media is talking about it. I'm like, fuck. Guess yeah, I'm yeah. watching the trailer. Guess I'm watching this new one. It's just like I told everybody I didn't need to see another Star Wars trailer because I knew I was going. Like, <laughs> what's it going to do but ruin little pieces of it for me? Or, you know, make it not a... Because I've gone in fresh on a couple of things now, and I love it. So if I could ever manage it, I'll do it. But I usually don't manage it because I can't help myself. I'm going to look at it if you post it, you know? Gotcha. <sighs> yeah. Well, anything else for us, buddy? Well, yeah, there's lots more. Uh, the the um, soundtrack list has also been revealed, but it's uh, probably a spoiler, so I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, I don't want to know. Yeah. It's okay. Can I interest you in an animated Watchmen movie? Uh, yes. I want Saturday morning Watchmen, Chris. Well, no. Like an HBO-style Spawn-like Watchmen. Yeah, I think that would be the redemption of the other one, which wasn't entirely wrong, but it had its problems. That It definitely had some issues. Um, number one, I think, being Ozymandias is my problem with the movie really overall is he's just such a Hitler in the movie and it's just not the way it's supposed to be, you know? Yeah. He really bungled the murder mystery aspect of it, you know? Yeah. That's just the scraping the surface of the issues with it. Hmm. I think that's the fundamental narrative, you know, that you're supposed to tell it like it's a detective story or like a mole hunt, like, you know, like, Taylor Tinker, Soldier Spy, whatever the fuck that movie was, was closer to being the actual tone of Watchmen than the Watchmen movie was. And it's true. I'm glad the Ant-Man stuff keeps falling through because I have the feeling they just snyder the fuck out of that too. Like they keep trying to make it into a superhero movie, even though they don't have all superhero properties. Um. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I think, I think HBO is a very good place for it. No, that's the proper. It should have always been like a miniseries, anyway. You know, it should have been like absolutely a one season like Westworld, but then it's over. That should have been watch where you get to dive into the world every episode. You know, um, Matt. Yes, dear. You like you like the Aladdin, don't you? Uh, only because it is Disney's greatest film of all time. Well, how's about if I told you in the inevitable live action one, you can have your genie portrayed by Mr. William Smith? Who? Will Smith. Oh. Fresh Prince. Oh. Will Smith. 
You threw me off when you were like William Smith. I was like, uh. I've never heard him referred to by his full name. I was like, that could be anybody. <laughs> Who is this William Smith? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be honest. Uh, we need a genie for the new millennium. So uh, what do I, you think? I, I, I'm not loving the idea, uh, if only because he's not really greatly known for improv, which was Character. half of what made him so good. You know who I think would be yeah. really good? Who? Although he doesn't have the star power to pull it off like Disney wouldn't tap him for the genie, is H. John Benjamin. Oh. He yeah. might be a little too droll for it. But it's all improv, and I think he would do so good with it. It would counteract the, uh, like, the comparisons, basically, because you'd be going in the opposite direction. Right. I don't know what else you you can't yet. try and imitate the, yeah. the Robin Williams. Do your own thing. That's, what, that's why I'm thinking that Will Smith's a good idea, because... You know, because you can't replace Rob Williams, and so getting an improv would would seem like you're trying to recreate. So getting someone like Will Smith, who's just you know good, would probably be the right move. Stuck in my head now, and it's action remakes that they've been going with. I still feel like a character actor would have been the guy to put in there. I don't know, like Will's just gonna be Will, isn't he? Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Likeable and everything. He's just, he's just going to be going around going, oh, hell no, nah, Al. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm digging uh, it. Okay. I will be sold if they make a Wild Wild West reference. Uh, if he yeah, puts like on he the Wild Wild down. West glasses and yeah. goes, Let, hey, Al, let's go get Wild Wild. <laughs> Just, just a, a mechanical spider in the uh, Prince Ali sequence would be fine with me. <laughs> or, <laughs> um, I just want them to make references to, in general. Like that's what I half the fun of the genie was all these completely random and sometimes obscure references. Yeah. Which I mean, at that point, why didn't you hire Abed from Community? But whatever. <laughs> oh, there's, there's no time. No time. Plus, he's probably like another character in there. He'd be a you good job. Instead of Will Smith, why not uh, um, Donald Glover? <laughs> I'd say that for why, everything. Why, that? why not have Benedict Cumberbatch? <laughs> why <laughs> why not Donald Glover? Because he's clearly going to be Jafar because every time there's a famous Brown character, they hire Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or, uh, I don't know, Nathan Fillion. Uh, 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 <laughs> you're, you're fucking with my emotions. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he's still going to be Green Lantern one day. No, yeah, he's not. Or Nathan Drake or Wonder no, Man. No, he's not. His own thing. That ship's passed. Let, him, let Nathan Fillion go. Or he's going to be Uncle Mal in the Firefly reboot. No, there isn't. <laughs> Firefly uh, Generations, where it's, it's, just, it's, it's Wash's son or Don, no. whatever they had, and yeah, no. with the new generation. No. Let it go. No, Chris. I Let shouldn't. it go. I refuse to. Do no. it. Firefly. You'll be happier in the long run. Maybe we'll get this movie someday. <laughs> no, it's not. Let that go too. Six seasons in a movie. Nope. Nope. Six seasons in a movie was a beautiful dream. We'll get it back together. Just a dream. Hey, what else you got, Crizzle? Well, James Gunn will direct and write Guardians of the Galaxy three. I don't think that's surprising to anyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad he's going to be on for Guardians four and five. Not announced, so. Yeah, they did. No. Yes, sir. Well, then I don't know if he's doing it. I think they said that they, they, they're they they're planning on it. Yeah. Okay. I think complete his trilogy and then move on, probably. Other than, like, I don't know. 
maybe he'll maintain like this is the only thing he can do. Maybe he'll be like a Hugh Jackman about it and go, this is my most successful work, so I'll keep going. But I just feel like he can finish his story and leave. You know? I feel like that's the right call. Yeah. Um, we have our directors for the Captain Marvel movie. Oh, we do. Well, I did say I did say directors. Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck, uh, whose last movie was Mississippi Grind. Interesting. They are. Uh, they both will uh, will take on the role. Huh. Okay. We have our lineup for uh, Squirrel Girl and the New Warriors TV show. Yeah. We've got Squirrel Girl, Night Thrasher, Speedball, Microbe, Debris, and Mister Immortal and Squirrel. You got to have speedball, son. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they do. <laughs> um, Archie's going back to basics. I'm sorry. What was that? No, I said with guest appearances from Dark Hawk. I'm oh, yeah. Obviously. Uh, Archie's yeah. going back to basics with uh, your pal Archie, which is going to be like the, uh, the digest Archie's. But the looks are going to be updated to the Riverdale kind of aesthetic. So. Oh. Hmm, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Shamiak Moore, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from the movie Dope, is our animated Miles Morales. And uh, Liev Schreiber is a, will be playing the villain in this animated movie. Oh, okay. Good. The Dope was, was awesome. That was one of my favorite movies from like last year or the year before. I haven't seen. I haven't even heard of Mississippi Grind. I'm just like looking it up to see what what these guys have done. Oh, well, we'll see. I guess. Yeah. All right, Chris. And that's it. Cool. Well, like I said, there just wasn't much about it in gaming this this week. No, because we we covered last week the Scorpio news, the Nintendo news, the Atlas news. We we went over all that, and it's kind of nothing's really happened this week. Well, oh, they, they did announce the switch. They did announce the Super Nintendo Mini. Yes, coming out this Christmas for no one to be able to find, and then to be discontinued yeah. four months later because Nintendo <laughs> has announced that they are discontinuing the NES Mini, despite the fact that it's sold out everywhere and people are clamoring for it. They're like, nah, fam. We, we've gotten too much goodwill with the Switch. We needed to do something to fuck it all up. Yeah. I was wondering what, like, if they're taking... Like, 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 Doug, your, your when, audio is cracking all kinds of up. Oh, sorry. Well, it's probably because my phone's not as reliable of the internet, uh, on the internet connection. Okay, now you're sounding good. Yeah. I was just saying, I was wondering if they were taking a Disney tack with it, where, like, Disney would do those limited releases of their VHS tapes or whatever uh, the whole time I was growing up. They'd only be available for, like, one season, and then you'd have to Malt. wait, like, five years. To get one of them. Uh, so they might just be like, okay, that's enough for NES. We're going to move on to Super Nintendo, and then whatever, and then we'll go come back around and do another follow-up NES mini-release or something. Uh, or they're just stupid because they're Nintendo and they do weird things every once in a while. Well, it does look like they've hit that Wii level of uh, hysteria again because the Switch is officially their fastest selling system of all time. Um, and it now holds the record for the high. Uh, Zelda holds the record for the highest attach rate of a video game ever. Um, that's not a like, pack in. Like you can't count Wii Sports because everyone that bought a Wii got Wii Sports. Uh, Zelda has over 100%, which means people bought it without even buying a Switch. They couldn't find a Switch, but they bought Zelda. Yeah. That's insane. I'm around to affording the system. I know I want this game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it happen before. I mean, anytime a new system comes out and it's hard to find, people will buy the games so that when they do buy the system, they're, you know, ready. Yeah. Um, other than that, not much. What about this thing on Twitch about the uh, the super subscriber level? 
I haven't really followed that because I don't follow Twitch subscriptions. I know they're adding two new subscribe uh, subscription models. Well, I, I was reading the article on um, on comics. I mean, Kotaku. Yeah. And uh, basically, it's it's uh, there's a super level that's like twenty five dollars a month, and a regular level that's ten dollars, and a poor level that's five dollars. And basically, if you pay for the twenty-five dollar level, you get like special emotes or whatever. Right. Uh, I mean, I think that's cool. If, if you like someone enough to subscribe to them and and do that, you know, it's no different than a Patreon, I guess. But if you're if you're willing to pay for it, do it. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, Chris, why don't we jump into comics? Because this was a stacked week for comics. A lot of good stuff this week. Yeah. Let me pull up the old iPad. You're an iPad. Yes. Yes, I am. Right here. <laughs> so, I got Josie and the Pussycats, number six. Yeah, with a whole lot of uh, Let It Go Frozen references. Yeah. They had a real good time with that. I kind of like the story about um, Alexander Cabot being a crazy person who kidnaps the band and sends them to his ice palace in Antarctica because they made his sister sad once. <laughs> That's funny. And it also really works with the, uh, the development of Alexandra's uh, character as, as it's been done in the previous issues. True. Although I don't understand why... Um, Valerie still hangs out with Josie and the Pussycats. I don't know. I feel like her patience is running uh, thin. Super thin? Super thin. All the thin. Yeah. So thin it's a mint. All right. I, I have Archie, number 19. Yeah. <laughs> Hold the phone. Holding the phone. Oh my god, I had so many books this week. You sure did. Archie. This was a sweet book. Yeah. Mr. Lodge uh, tries to find a new suitor for Veronica after her and Archie had some difficulties. And Veronica and Jug had become friends. It also has this great line, one of my favorites in the series. Blurry. Hold on, it's going to... Blurry. There we go. There it is. I like that sequence a lot of him trying to uh, get Archie out of uh, out of being stuck in a tent. Every day you're still alive is a miracle. It's a lot of fun. There was some good, was some good slapstick illustrations going on. Indeed. Um, I have U.S. Avengers number six, a secret empire tie-in. That's still going on. U.S. Avengers, yes. Yeah. I just don't remember you talking about it in a while. I've talked about it every issue that's come out. Okay. You're just not listening. Probs. Definitely. Um, I'm debating whether to, to leave uh, the Secret Avenger, the Secret Empire nonsense just completely in the dust. Because uh, I don't care. <laughs> And uh, this issue is Captain America being a dick to Roberto, and I'm not real down with that. Okay. So I'm debating. Because uh, I'm, I'm not getting Secret Empire at all. That That is the big event that came out. So I'm thinking I'm just going to leave all the books that, that cross over to it mm -hmm. just out until they're done. That's fair. Uh, I have Doctor Strange, number 19. All right. We're wrapping up to the end of end of uh, Jason Aaron's run on this. Are you uh, this stick with it with the new creative team? I like Dennis Hopeless a lot, so uh, I, I will see. But this, this one's been really interesting, and it's kind of got me into Doctor Strange in a way that I've never been into Doctor Strange before. So, yeah. Yeah, I only recently started getting into him at all. 
Um, yeah, this this Jason Aaron run I think really works for it, even though he's kind of um, he's kind of Tony Stark a little bit in this. Yeah, but it, it's still they're both kind of assholes. Well, yeah, I can I can I can live with that. Yeah, um, uh, I have Daredevil number nineteen. This issue is great. Yes, this is continuing the Purple Saga. Uh, where Purple Man is trying to get Daredevil to admit the worst thing he could possibly do so he could make him do it. I love the characterization of the Purple Man. Basically, he's like, I'm so bored with making people do whatever I say yes. that now I make them do, I ask them the, the one thing that they would never do, like that would truly crush their soul, and I make them do it. It's a rush. And I'm like, you are a fucking twisted dude. So he's basically trying to figure out what Daredevil's like thing that would kill his soul would be. And it's a fascinating issue. Yes. My favorite moment of this is this is still a flashback to when Dare right. before Daredevil. All of the stuff that he's telling in his uh, confessions. Confessional. And we finally see what is going to happen that's going to reset Daredevil's status quo. Yes. Yes. Indubitably. Uh, I have Sex Crims, number 18. Yeah. Also, what's great about Sex Crims, Chris? What? Um, and besides the fact that there's an actual new one, um, is there a not safe for work uh, variant cover? Yeah, yeah. Look who today's is. Erica Henderson, yeah. And look at the thing on the back. I'll read it to you. Oh, okay. hey, it's the woman that draws Jughead and Squirrel Girl. Should we buy this book without binging it first? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was, it was a question and answer. The answer is just no. Still, uh, this issue was really good. This book is getting very kind of melancholy and sad. It is. Uh, I think that in six years, when they make enough issues to release a second hardcover, it's going to be <laughs> real good to read because, unfortunately, these like three to six month gaps between issues is a real drag. Let me ask you a question. Okay. How much of this do you think is kind of autobiographical? Oh, a lot. Like, uh, like um, Deadly Class got weirdly autobiographical for a bit. Yeah, no, that I, I think a lot of their own sexual hangups and and issues in their lives came into play. Yeah, I, mean, or they I just watched a lot of HBO's Real Sex. <laughs> God, that was the highlight of of getting free HBO back in the uh, in the early two thousands. Oh, uh, I need you to pass this on to Josh. Guess what they is coming out next week? What? A new issue of Killer Be Killed. Ah uh, shit. And the first issue of the next arc of Black Monday Murders. Ah. Uh, the Black not? Tuesday Murders. I wonder where they're going to go with it. I don't know either, but it's going to be real good. Yeah. So that's going to be a solid week next week. Looking at <clears throat> I'll pass it on if he uh, gets in touch with you tonight. We'll so, see. completely tangential. Uh, I'm really enjoying all of the internet's memes about Bill O'Reilly getting kicked off Fox. It's been, it's been really interesting to read everyone's hot takes. I haven't seen any of them. All right, Chris, what else you got? Excuse me. I have Superman number 21. Yeah? Continuing the story of uh, the creepy swamp next to Superman's house. And Batman and Damien show up and hang out. Okay. Uh, I wonder if this is tied in in any way to the Super Sons ongoing. I believe it should be. Is it, or do you think it is? I don't read Super Sons, so I don't know. Yeah, neither do I. But this issue is very much a lot of uh, John and Damien kind of hanging out and doing stuff. And at the end of it, the villain is finally revealed to us, and it's very shocking. Okay. Uh, I have Batwoman number two. Yeah? Yes. Is it an improvement? Yes. Are you enjoying it? 
we're starting to get to the real interesting thing about uh, basically in her in her wild Kate Kane past. She washed up on an island that was ruled by this woman who kept all the black market and mercenaries in line that prevented people from colonizing the island. Okay. It was kind of this weird symbiotic relationship. And Kate did something uh, in her past and fucked everything up, and now she has to fix it. Hmm. Okay. And that's kind of really fun. And I, I, I like this uh, delving into her lost period between when she left West Point and when she became Batwoman. Word. So I'm down with that. Uh, next, I have, I, have the, I have the big book of the week, the big boy book of the week. Wait, a uh, question before we get to that. Yeah. Did you get Miss Marvel? I did. Let's do all the other books you read, then we'll talk the big book. All right. Uh, I have Miss Marvel number 17. The finale of the evil sentient computer virus arc. For now. Dun, dun, For dun, now. Dun. Boy, um, this issue got a little preachy. A little bit, but you know what? But you know, um, it's a good message. Yes. And I, I, I not being a dick on the internet. Please don't, yeah. Um I I haven't loved this arc, but I think this final issue kind of really elevated it. It, okay. it, it is a little preachy, but it's a good kind of preachy, so I'm okay with it. All right. Yeah. That's all I have. Oh, wow. I think this might actually be the biggest week of books I have that you don't. Probably. Yeah. That's a lot of books. Plus Rapid one more. Fire, Rapid fire. So let's just appreciate how beautiful this watercolor art is. Well, yeah, it's Dustin Nguyen. He's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, this is the final issue of uh, this next arc. Uh, and they've been teasing this new arc as like a big five-part uh, summer event. So mm. that's going to be intriguing. Also, Chris, do you remember that, that book, Alex and Ada? Yes, I do. There's a preview for their next series. Oh, ah, interesting. So I thought that was intriguing. Yeah. Uh Got the new Green Lanterns continuing their fight against Polaris. Polaris pulls down the entire watchtower. Yeah, I saw that in the Force Unleashed. Yeah, that's exactly what it, I was gonna. I was going to like make that connection. Way to steal my thunder, you big no jerk. Problem. No problem. Bro. Um, also, this came out today, Chris. Yes, I need to. I need to rent it at some point. Same. Bless you. I am super loving Nightwing. Uh, Nightwing. The whole series with Dr. Hurt has been fantastic. Uh, oh, it's good times. I really like the idea of his new girlfriend being pregnant and he's going to be a dad soon. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. That's going to go well. It's going to be intriguing. Let's see if uh, DC pulls a DC and murders the baby somehow. Well, here's a here, here here's your two options: either you have a Damien, or you're swinging a dead cat in an alley. It's there's no middle ground. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Then we got the latest issue of Iron Heart, because that's her new name. I don't know why they keep calling it Iron Man. It's Riri Williams's Iron Man, and this is just setting up the new status quo, and she's going to be part of the champions. That could be fun. Yeah. Um, Monstrous. It's uh, the penultimate issue of the new arc. Chris, this book has still has some of the best art you'll ever see. It, My it, God. The issues I read were visually stunning. Oh, it's so good. I mean, this is also just painted. All done in like this amazing Japanese style. Oh, it's so good. Uh, new issue of Curse Words. Mm -hmm. and yes, that is a panda riding a corgi into battle with a magic uh, spear. Yes. Because, well, of course... Like you do. Yeah. You know, it's good times. It's, he finds out that there's magic in our world, as long as people believe in it. Got the new issue of Lucifer. Yeah. It's still going. 
rapid fire in it. New issue of Black Science. And uh, finally, before we talk into the big book of the week, I'm going to talk about the other big book of the week because I broke down, Chris. Oh, you did. I enjoy did. your 1,200 insider points. Oh, I'm going to enjoy it real good. Now, here's the shocking part, Chris. You really liked it. It's fucking great. And, and because it's an issue zero, it's a primer. And as someone who hasn't read any of Nick Spencer's Captain America book, it made me feel like I was completely caught up. It, yeah. it, it gives enough exposition in an interesting way to make me feel like I didn't, I'm not going to lose out. But it's, Chris, you know how one of my favorite things is when someone, it's like the Ocean's Eleven syndrome where they plan a heist, everything's planned out perfectly and they execute it and you think things are going wrong, but at the very end they're like, haha, this is what I really planned all along. Yeah. It's like that. This is uh, Steve Rogers. They explain how the cosmic cube made him, you know, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. It's how Steve Rogers positioned himself into the head of shield and, and created these disasters that one by one, uh, removed all threats and gave him emergency power. And then all of a sudden he's like, he springs the trap. Yeah. And it ends in such a satisfying way. And the buildup is so good. And you're just like, you know, it's how it's going to end. The cosmic cube's going to rewrite history. Steve Rogers is going to go back to being Captain America and everything's going to be honky dory, but I don't care because I was really impressed by this. Uh, I was shocked. I did not see that coming. Um, son of a bitch. Well, enjoy. I will. I did not see that coming. Ha! <laughs> I, I did not there. see that Okay. Terrible. And then finally, Chris, Terrible. why don't we talk about the big one? Yes, uh, Batman number 21, the beginning of the button. Yes. Oh, nice. With the awesome lenticular cover Ooh. well if you bought it digitally you just have half and half yeah well mine's cooler okay so Come man on. batman sure did love his uh his note from his dad well yeah wouldn't you I, what i love doug about this issue is that it uh reverse flash is here from flashpoint universe and yeah. he's beating the shit out of batman and Flash is on his way in a minute, and the entire issue is told in the span of a minute. Oh, that's awesome. My favorite moment of this is Reverse Flash is vibrating too fast to be hit, and Batman deduces that he has to be physical somewhere, and he stabs him in the foot with a batarang. Yes. Oh. Awesome. No, but um, yeah, like, like the whole book, Doug, is just – done in, in, a, in each second of a minute. I'm really excited. I really, I really liked how this turned out. Yeah. And what I love is that this is just going to be a four issue event. And so, Oh, and also how cool is it that it started with a um, Saturn girl? Yes. This is how They're I not expect bringing the Legion. Well, they've been, they, they've been talking about bringing them back for a bit. So, uh, my favorite moment of this is when was when uh, Thrawn went through the the warp. He yeah. uh, he saw God or somebody. Man, it's got to be Doctor Manhattan. It has to be because he was burning in blue flame. Yeah, but dude, like even though this is a four part and it's only gonna probably be a primer for a bigger summer event. Um, I don't care because this was fantastic. Yes. It's, uh, literally, like, the, this is the best route. Like, I would, if you had asked me if I wanted this to happen, like, a few years back, I would have said no. I like certain stories sitting by themselves. But they already broke that seal with Before Watchmen, and I knew they were going to start bridging everything into one. They've been doing it for a while with the Vertigo characters and everything. This is just the best so far, like, using the story to bring him in that I've seen. And probably the most intrigued I've been by an upcoming whatever the fuck they're about to do. 
Like I haven't cared about most of DC, uh, most of DC or Marvel's big events uh, until recently, or I haven't cared since maybe the first Civil War. And now I'm like kind of, oh, this is interesting. Going small on it is the way to go right now. If you're gonna build up to something, you know, just have a cool thing. Flash and Batman are the only people that have to be in this story right now. Yes. Word. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah. Is there anything? Really... Say what? Is there anything else? Nope. All, all right. right. I guess that's our show. <laughs> Hooray! We did it. Right is my bad family. I'm right. All right, All right uh, we'll be back. Pass on his information. Um, so, one more time? Yeah, what? I said if I do see Josh tonight, I'll tell him to pass his information on you or something. Oh, yeah. Word. Okay, guys. You have a great night, everybody. All see right. you next week. Good night, everyone. We'll be back next week. Usual time, usual channel. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Bye.